Thanks very much for joining us on The Key Points. Now, the controversial e-levy dominated the news this week. It started off with an engagement in Kumasi in the Ashanti region by the opposition NDC, where they restated their zero e-levy position. Let's hear John Jinapur, who is a former deputy minister for energy, speaking about that. Maintain that, but the majority side has failed to engage. Yes, they haven't engaged us. You can ask them, who have they engaged? Have they engaged the, the leader? Have they engaged the chiefship? Have they engaged the party? You cannot build consensus alone. You build consensus with people. I can confirm that the majority side has not engaged members of the minority. Now, let's talk about your presentation today. You made reference to happenings in countries like Kenya, Uganda, and you were even emphatic on their threshold. Are you trying to say that should the threshold be revealed, the minority perhaps will consider? That is not even what I'm saying. I'm saying that they should engage further. We have a lot of suggestions for them. In terms of the timing, we are just coming out of COVID. I just give those examples to show how harsh the 1.75 is. But like we said, we are opposed to the E-Levy and we we'll vote against it. Now, my final question has to do with, the, of course, I'm still on the E-Levy. And this is against the E-Levy, I mean, entirely. But data transaction in 2016 was $20 billion. In 2017, $36 billion. 2018, $48 billion. And in 2020, around $100 billion. Isn't it fair for governments, I mean, get a share of that? They're already getting something out of it. The telecos charge about 2%, is that not it? Part of that money goes to government. And so the more the transaction, the more the telecos get. And the more the telcos get, the more they pay to government. So if government says they are not getting any chance of it, it's not true. Government is getting something from Momo through the telecos. And that's uh, John Jinapo, there, former Deputy Minister of Energy. He addressed that uh, engagement in the Ashanti region on behalf of the NDC. But certainly not to be outdone in controlling the narrative. The government team also mobilized and headed to the eastern region to put forward a robust argument for the E-Levy. And so the battle for the hearts and minds to support the E-Levy's implementation remains ongoing. Kufour introduced the communication service tax. That tax was introduced at the rate of 6%, which was later increased to 9%. E-Levy is being introduced at the lowest rate for any tax in Ghana, comparatively at 1.75%, less than 2%. When the CST was introduced, it faced similar opposition as we are seeing currently. And the current speaker dubbed it as talk tax. As the NDC and the industry, led by the GSMA data, claimed it would damage the growth of the telecommunications industry as consumers would change their mobile communication habits. This does not happen. They were unfounded fears. Several years on, we realized that those dangers were unfounded. It never happened. The industry has grown exponentially since 2008. And all of us find telecommunications and digital infrastructure applications as services as indispensable to everything that we seek to do. The same speculations and complaints are being made about the e-levy that consumers will stop using electronic transactions because of the imposition of this levy. I dare say that based on our experience with the communication service tax and lessons from other African countries, we are confident that the e-levy will not bring about any negative changes in consumer behavior as electronic transactions afford us the convenience, the safety, the security that we currently enjoy. And that's the Communications and Digitalization Minister, Ursula Owusu Ekufo. She also had advice for the opposition NDC, which has really been a thorn in the side of the government in trying to push through this e-levy.
communication service tax. They never repealed it when they were in power. They didn't even reduce the rate of the levy. They also complained about and rejected the National Health Insurance Scheme when it was introduced in Parliament and actually worked out. They complained about the capitation grant and sought to rubbish it. They had issues with free SHS and even asked for a, a boycott of the national ID and ridiculed our oil discovery as well, claiming that it was a drink and not crude oil. They always oppose every initiative that will ultimately benefit the Ghanaian people. But our collective experience shows, and they themselves admit, that despite their initial opposition to many of these interventions, they've proven to be worth their weight in gold. I dare say, and I appeal to them, to cooperate with government and work with us to pass this levy as well, because ultimately, the results that we got from the communication service tax, which clearly did not destroy the industry, will also be evident post-implementation And that's uh, Ursula Wusweko for the Communications and Digitalization Minister. So there have been more engagements since that forum in the eastern region, particularly with the minority, which has remained entrenched in its position that it will not support the E-Levy. Well, the finance minister had a meeting with the leadership of parliament uh, to further agree a path to how the e-levy can be implemented and at what threshold well we understand that the finance minister uh, has proposed another reduction of 0 0.25 to bring the government's number to 1.5 percent we don't know if that has been accepted or agreed yet but if it is agreed it will then add on to the 0.75 percent from the telcos when the levy kicks in but the truth of the matter is that the bill could not be put before the house yesterday let's hear our the e levy bill will be considered next week but there have been some consultations which began yesterday. The speaker, the, the consultations are by concluding. If they conclude positively, then perhaps we can consider the uh, E-Levy today. If they don't conclude positively, then um, they go to next week as scheduled. All right, so that's Oseche Mensa Bonzu, who is the majority uh, leader in parliament. But certainly uh, we'll be delving a bit more into it because it doesn't look like this battle is over yet. Our guest this morning, Dr. Stephen Amwa, who is the MP for Inshai. So he's also a member of the Finance Committee in Parliament. Dr. Amwa, thank you for coming. Good morning. Good morning. It's a and pleasure the, having me you on your PC. Thank you, platform. sir. And uh, we'll be joined also by Kweku George Ricketts Hagan, who is a former Deputy Finance Minister and MP for Cape Coast. So we'll start off with uh, Dr. Amwa, who joins us in the studio. So first, Dr. Amwa, tell us um, what is happening in reference to the E-Levy bill in Parliament. We understand that the bill could not come back to the House yesterday as expected. The Speaker of the House, the Right Honourable Alban Bagbin, indicated that he'd been waiting for you MPs throughout and you all refused to come. So he left. Tell us where are we on that? Um, thank you very much. My regards to our viewers this morning. But please, before then, give me one minute to do something. Um, there is this trend in Ghana that all of us must be very sensitive uh, to it or about it. And this is, I don't know how to go about it because now, even when you speak, Somebody will take just one word, do a story with it, and others are insulting and painting you in a different... There's this trend in Ghana that if you are interviewed or you do a presentation, 
then you realize that the news that will come to the public domain, somebody picks just an extract and do a whole and does a whole news about it, put it on platforms. First, maybe a website. Second, you see all platforms. Then people who read just pick that thing, that face value thing, attack you, insult you. It's not about the individual. So what, see what happened in Egypt. Let's all be careful about this in this country. Whether against NDC, MPP, or an individual, His Excellency Nanado Dangwa, or His Excellency former president, whatever it is, maybe people don't see what I'm talking about. But gradually, a generation is being deceived. Reportage. They just cut, and that's all. But and that's why this is a live program. I it's on you. Facebook. That's on. It's on Twitter. My dear, what I'm talking about is not just only this or TV3. It's something that as a nation we should look at. You're concerned about how people's words or the narrative they put out exactly. is manipulated. And then, because of various platforms, before you realize, from it's gone viral. everywhere, and the people are being deceived by any society that goes this way, one day you may see uprising not out of necessity. And it will be limitless. It will not be limited to NDC and people or whatever. So me, it's just my advice that all of you and all of us should look at this critically because it's very risky. Then coming back to what he said, I came to parliament and most of my colleagues were in parliament. I wouldn't say all oh, because I wouldn't be very sure of who is not in all. But you see those, normally I fled. But I see, I saw them around. And most of the NDC MPs, because we are friends, and despite the fact that sometimes the interface uh, depicts um, some hostile and antagonism. We are friends. <laughs> we, we talk, play, sometimes we eat together. We do a whole lot of things. I saw most of them. Probably I may not be privy to certain pieces of information because, of course, in any organization, there's this thing called asymmetric information where you are all probably stakeholders. However, some stakeholders are privy to certain pieces of information others may not have. But what I know is that we all came. The processes leading to presenting the bill or putting it up for uh, subsequent uh, uh, as it proceedings or whatever it is, I uh, don't know what actually went wrong or went right. This is all that I can say. But my concern is not whether it was passed, it was not passed, it was put up, it was not put up. My concern is we should all be given the needed opportunity to discuss this e levy very well. Why do we need it? In terms of timeliness, in terms of correctness, in terms of its pros and cons, what will be the consequences if we pass? What will be the consequences if we don't pass? We need to discuss these things very well. Take NDC and PP out of it. Let experts who are speaking should be honest and stick to their professional ethics and professionalism and do this nation a great deal of good service. Not to speak because you are for the government, even if it's not good. Oh, we need it, is that. Or because you are not for the government. You want to rubbish it and deceive other people out of intellectual dishonesty. Let us make sure that as a country, this, I have no problem with my opposition friends. Do you know why? Probably MPP would have done the same thing. But as a country, do we have to continue the cycle? And those in between, the media and then the experts, the professors and doctors in financial economics and other places, should be honest enough, present a picture of this economy. Tell us the truth while we got there. But you were at the parliamentary retreat in Ho. You had experts. You had tax experts. You had experts from the Institute of Statistical Economic Research. You had experts from the university's economics department. And I think one narrative seemed to run through that it was, it's quite a regressive tax. It was, it's not a tax that would, you know, stand the government in good stead. I think that point was made, and the finance minister was there. Uh -huh. So I think if there's no other <coughs> place that, that experts and professionals have been honest with you, they were at least honest with you at that retreat. No, maybe, I get your point, but you're not getting what I'm saying. 
I don't think one narrative runs through. We have diverse opinions. Who is speaking louder and whatever it is might be different. Normally, nobody wants to pay tax, whether in developed economies or in a developing economy. So whoever, let me give you this scenario. You and your husband, you're taking care of your baby. Your baby's condition is such that if you don't give particular prescribed <coughs> medicine, maybe the baby will die. And the medicine is quite bitter. Already, the baby probably is suffering from <coughs> extreme malaria. And that she, he's gotten bitterness in the truth already. If the mother is saying that, oh, darling, don't let us give this, you know, the baby will... And the father is saying that we need it because of the future and then the, the, the recovery or the good health of the, the baby definitely will think it's the mother that's doing him or her good. But what I'm trying to say is that I'm advising the experts, my problem is with them, that they should be honest, professional with the issue. Because my mother at home, illiterate mother, Nyako, <laughs> will probably listen to radio and what other people are saying, she doesn't know anything. The fact of the matter is that doing comprehensive analysis of our economic situation, which any honest person cannot and remarkably blame this present government, we know that we need this tax and we need it to ensure that this country is rather put on the right footing. It's extremely important. It's very, very important. We can do politics with it. Because somebody did politics when other government was there. We can do whatever we want to do. But, my sister, we need it. It's not the halabalu and the poleka jargons and talks. Everybody says he doesn't want it. What did he use the previous money for? All these things to me, they are just meant for poleka gains. But the fact of the matter is that considering our fiscal space at present, as a country, as a result of about 22 months, this health issue that has really destroyed the entire world's economy. Considering the fact that government was paying public and civil service workers for so many months that they were not working, even, even as of now, at present, there are still some workers, public service and civil service workers, who are not working, but they are being paid. We should look at this fact. The fact that our our, our uh, productivity as a country has been impaired for so many months. And as a result, your GDP can never grow. No professor can change it. And this is something which is true. We should be careful. And look at, at present, health sector, educational sector, and other places, they are all pressing for new concessions. They want increment in that. They want introduction of that. They want this. We should look at these things critically. You can do all the politics in the world, but let us be careful that we don't make arbitrary decisions because of power and hate speech and probably, I would say, unconscious incompetence and destroy this country. But, Mr. Am but Dr. Amway, I don't think the analogy about people not wanting to pay tax is right. People will be willing to pay if they can see what they are getting out of the payments. Thank We've you. lost $12 billion or we leak 12 billion, according to the Auditor uh, General's report. Mm -hmm. We know that there's some significant public sector corruption. Those leakages have not been plugged, and yet you are on a hunt for 7 billion CDs, knowing fully well that if you plugged leakages, you could actually get that money and others. We are spending uh, on multiple contracting, ministries are going beyond their contractual requirements and so for this reason that is why people are opposed to the e-level it may not be just because they don't want to pay they are asking we've paid so much over whatever period and we don't even see what is being used for we have cocoa money we have timber money we have oil money <laughs> yet it hasn't we haven't seeing that development you say that seven billion is going to solve our problems nobody has said that seven billion will solve our problems other people make statements and let it appear like we are seeing it because of propaganda but your statement is extremely important that is the face that as a country stakeholders we need to take serious what you're saying because to me is the most important face of all this whole cycle that all of us because it's very important how we use our money 
And this issue you are raising is not today. Go and check all the test reports. It doesn't mean we should accept it. I agree with you 100%. The fact that we have problems in terms of corruption. Corruption is not only MPP and DC. Corruption in the media, corruption among the police, corruption even among some chiefs. Cor corruption, when I say media, it doesn't mean everybody. When I say MPP and DC, it doesn't mean everybody. Corruption has been a national issue that we need to address. Whilst we are trying to address and raising issues which I think is very authentic, like you are saying, does not necessarily mean that we should let the country collapse. We shouldn't work on taxes. People should look at this, this, this whole issue and general state. We have cocoa, we have this, we have that. Fine. Have we also sat down to just pose that with the obligations we have as a country? This is where most experts don't do as any uh, 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 service as a country. Because, yes, we have all these things. We should be honest enough to look at, analyze what comes out of each of these, for, I would say, revenue generation centers, and then against the obligations in the area of health, in the area of infrastructure, in the area of social needs. I mean, our tax payment, uh, sorry, our, our debt servicing or interest payment, <clears throat> other areas that are inevitable, that we need to do. When we do all these things, then you can say that, oh, we are generating enough for this, but why are you doing that? Okay, I'll, if, I'll, put, I'll, I'll put you on pause there for now. Let me bring in uh, the Honorable Ricketts Hagan, and thank you for making some time to join us this uh, morning. So, yeah, I like I like the, the show of, uh, you know, greetings between the two of you. <laughs> so, I'm sure you've been listening to Dr. Amwa, but first, tell us, um, is the minority considering the finance minister's proposal to reduce the e-levy by a 0.25% to 1.5%. Um, good morning, uh, Chifa, and uh, good morning to your viewers, and good morning to my good brother, Doc. <laughs> and uh, glad to see you this morning. Glad to see you. Looking, looking well after, <laughs> obviously, yesterday. Um, Chifa, I think the issue of the e-levy is one that we need to pay more attention to. Um, when I say more attention to, in terms of uh, further consultation and further research you know, into it. Um, tax policy is not an event. It's a process. Process that requires some consultation which we believe did not take place. Or if it did, it was not exhaustive enough. You know, you do hear, and you hit it right on the nail, you know, and you do hear nobody wants to pay tax. I mean, um, I have been a, a finance person, an economist for, for many years. I have served, uh, had the privilege to serve at the Ministry of Finance, so I feel sorry for them. I know what they are going through. Um, things are tough. The idea that nobody wants to pay tax is not exactly true. It's not true because if people will be willing to pay tax, if they know exactly what their tax money is being used for, every, I mean, any, I, I, I did some tests in my, in my constituency where I asked people whether they are for the e-levy or not. And then when they say they are not for the e-levy, my first question to them is that you don't think you should pay your first share of uh, tax? He said, oh, yes. I mean, obviously, how would the government get money to build schools, roads, and all that? But my problem, and that's just the people I ask, my problem is when I don't know what the tax I'm paying is being used for. Or when I see things where Basically, money is being wasted. There's a lot of corruption in the system. There's some kind of a luxurious living by, 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 by people in government. It becomes problematic for people to want to part with money that be, believe, they believe will go to no, no good use. So the issue about the e levy with the public, take minority out and... Let's look at what is happening in the public space. The issue with the public is one of a moral issue. Moral issue in a, in a, in a sense that people are thinking about the tax that they are paying 
and the usage of the tax revenue. Because the tax they pay then becomes the revenue that the government uses. And it is not about whether government needs more tax or government doesn't need it or people don't want to pay Momo or, or any of that levy. It is purely on the basis that people don't see that their money is being used in the way that they think it should be. People are not getting the services that they think they are paying for. They are not getting the good roads to drive on. Not a single hospital has been built by this government since uh, if they have, it's basically a hospital that somebody started and they've, they've, they've come to complete it. Not a single school that I know of, but yet the SHS is being implemented on the existing schools with all the challenges that it has at the moment without any additional school being added to it or adequate number of schools being, being added to it. So that is where the problem is. Now let's come to the, the economics of it. So this is like the social, you know, the economics of it is, is this. This is a government trying to pro promote a digital econom e economy, okay? And that payments and other things are being done in an electronic manner or be, um, digital, you know, payment. This same government is introducing a tax that will reverse all these gains in terms of a digital economy, in terms of financial inclusion, and all the things that comes with cashless society and all the things that this government is trying to come up with. Also, a good chunk, but 50% of our people, actually don't have a bank account. The new way of banking is through this e-wallet, where people are now banking. Now, Banking their money also means they're saving money on the, on the wallet. And basic economics tell, tells you that savings is what you invest in your economy. That is domestic savings before you go for anybody else's money. And you don't impose a tax. That tax savings. Because if you are taxing savings, then you are actually tax, taxing the investment that you are going to make in that country. And that is one of the reasons why this tax becomes, you know, a regressive tax, but not a progressive one. The 1.75 itself is also pro problematic for us. And we, our position at the moment is that we don't think that the e-levy is actually needed. And further down, I will explain to you from an economics and finance standpoint of somebody who's been at the Ministry of Finance, why they don't actually need this money at this stage. So, I so are you saying that the minority's position is still a zero e-levy? Absolutely. So even after the meeting with the finance minister, the proposal to reduce by 0.25%? Well, 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 that's also another story. I mean, we had a... I, I was a, um, fortunate enough to be part of, you know, the, the core leadership uh, meeting with the finance minister when when he met us on the first day which is the day before yesterday he didn't actually come with nothing he came to obviously preach to us why he needs <coughs> the e-levy and then he said we don't know why you are here whether you are here to negotiate or to to, to lecture us because you haven't <coughs> presented anything so please go and if you have something to present you come back obviously if he had something up his sleeves at the time you would have probably come up with it but he didn't. He, they went and came yesterday. That also affected sitting, you know, in the house uh, um, um, yesterday. And came with this idea that he is now prepared to shift 1.5. And we said, look, I personally, as I said, I feel very sorry for them. But I still think that even shifting that, that's, it's not a sign of really want to do something. Because... I know where they can get the money. And later on, we'll talk about, about that. that. Okay, now... So, you, you, our you're... position is, is basically 0.0% um, <laughs> e-levy. Okay, uh, just before I come to Dr. Amor, because he's been taking copious notes. <laughs> the, and, I, and I don't mean this to sound like an attack on businesses, so yeah. I hope no one interprets that as such. But 
for a, a, a num for quite a while users of the digital financial platforms had complained about one percent charges and other charges yeah. on them nobody cared to address that it seemed convenient for government because obviously out of that amount the the government gets its share or its due but to the extent that i know that people had been unhappy with the one percent why didn't you know leadership in, in in you know in government parliament address that because now it's not just about whether it's 1.5 percent it's 2.5 percent that we will all have to pay on any transaction going forward if it's passed yes well and don't forget uh, this is actually a transaction fee it's a charge actually on the transaction now things have changed i mean one of the reasons why i feel that we shouldn't have the e-levy particularly this year is that we have just come out of we're not even completely out of the pandemic yet but we can say that we can live with it better now economists are trying to get out of you know the the the, the difficulties that that they had people are trying to get up to basically speed with their businesses and all that again the last thing you want to do is to slap taxes on them when people are trying to dig themselves out of a hole it becomes problematic sometimes even if you have a tax that you think that tax should come. And I can see some justification, you know, in that. When you look at the way the economy itself is shifting. But then you ask yourself, is it a tax that you need to do further consultation on? Or is it a tax that you, you should implement because it's easy to do so? At the moment, I think the government is taking the easy option of thinking that, E-commerce has gone up by such a such a percentage. Digital payment has gone out. Economy has shifted from traditional economy to digital economy. So revenues in the traditional sense are, you know, drying up. Therefore, let's chase where the money is going and just go and tax people. That's basically what they are doing. Without any scientific basis other than that, the government needs money. But they are not looking at how much money they are wasting. If you want to do fiscal consolidation, you want to basically do things that will enhance or generate revenue. But you also want to do things that will rationalize your expenditure. If you don't have the money, you don't spend it. You don't go looking for more money, more money. And then if you say that you have what we haven't been good at, and it's not only this particular government, that in the last 10 years, and in the last 10 years, you were looking at maybe... 2012 to date, we have not been very good at expanding or broadening the tax base, broadening, you know, we have done a we've bit. Done, we've done quick fixes. We've done quick fixes. And what they are trying to do now is one of the quick fixes. Okay. So okay let and let me just finish on this yes. point. If you are in the formal sector, you are probably being taxed enough. What we are trying to reach is to reach the informal sector. Sometimes indirect tax, as you may look at it and think indirect tax reaches everyone. But you also forget that that indirect tax also reaches the person who is overburdened with tax already. Because if you are paying your taxes, government is reaching you, you are paying your taxes. If government is not reaching you, you are not. If you bring a, a universal or indirect tax, it affects everyone. So the person who's already paying is not paying more. And you've got to look at how carefully you craft that particular tax and not just say that, oh, this tax will bring in the informal sector. So let's do it. Right. It's a lazy way of taxing, basically. Dr. Amu, I won't ask you any questions. I think you already uh, have responses. So you go ahead and then I'll um, come in later. Jifa. But yes. please address the numbers for me. Numbers are real. Yes. There is the school that he said we've not built any school. I think this is what I was saying. That in, the, in making the attempt to let us have competitive edge within the bulk car industry, let's also be very careful the way we mislead and induce arbitrariness in general decision making as a country. How can you say this? Have you built schools? Madam. I have these figures here because we do not say we're coming to discuss. I get you, but he, has, but he has mentioned. I'm this saying too. that 
Eh? This free SHS has added about 1.2 million people. We have built 2,729 classrooms that can accommodate 109,160 people. Three classrooms, we've done 69. Six classrooms, we've done 894. Eight cl six classrooms, yes, eight classrooms, we've done eight. Twelve classrooms, we've done 1,600 and... Um, 60, uh, 1,644, sorry. 18 classrooms, we've done 90. 24 classrooms, we've done one. And this one, we, it's even ongoing. I will try and send you the places and what you've done. This is what I'm talking about. In any case, everybody knows that a no government can be in power for five years if the person hasn't built in the school. Let us not go in there. Jifa, what I want us to understand is that my senior brother said something, which in, in maths, I would say that taxation is more of, um, is more of um, calibration model. What it means is that as and when it's needed, you introduce taxes, you reduce taxes or increase taxes. Between 2014 and 2016, the NDC government, go and check their budget, Either introduced or imposed together 26 task components. In Parliament, we list all of them when they had listed 11. 26, go and check their budget. 2017, the same government today that they are claiming that we don't care about Ghanaians when it comes to taxes. We either reduced or take away entirely about 16 task components. That's where we did the financial services tax that they introduced, which is also electronic. You can say the mode and the whatever it is could be different. But it was electronic tax. That's why carry your tax, even condom tax. Drugs imported into Ghana but not produced. Real estate taxes. You remember, we did all. Later on, we added about five, six, and they were complaining. And now what is happening? So even if you are talking about net increase and net decrease, in terms of taxes we have increased or introduced, we have even a net, and in terms of <laughs> consideration. We, we, we still have done even positive for Ghanaians. That's what I'm saying. But I don't want to go into... The okay, but I, I just want, want to ask you on the schools, the data you gave us. You said you built all these classroom blocks. It doesn't amount to schools. It's added on to current infrastructure. So, so, I know the Ministry so, of Education so. is building 10 V blocks. I know that you've cut sword for some 35 STEM schools and five universities. But the truth is, none of these things are concretely on the ground. I know Agenda 111 is part of the plan. And it is even because at the end of the first term, there was a lot of criticism that the government had not <coughs> provided health infrastructure Jifa. and were relying on previous Jifa. infrastructure. That too, Jifa. we are yet to see. Jifa. In fact, the one year is coming Jifa. for us to Jifa. check. Please go onto the ground. It's not about propaganda. You think it is so prudent that you come into power first term, you see the probable state of schools, you are increasing uh, enrollment. Oh, there's nothing oh, wrong with that. Can I also have the opportunity? Oh, no, so I'm not saying that. No, <laughs> I I'm allow just... you to say okay, all go, this. Go I ahead. Allow you to also flow. Okay, go ahead. Sir. Jifa, any wise decision making processes will involve the fact that the existing schools will build new structures to accommodate the increase or increment. You don't leave that one and go to one village. See some of the e blocks. I travel a lot. The one that under former President Muhammad they started, the, is it the day school they wanted to build? Some of the places go to, I forgot, is it near the BRC area and other places where the schools were sited? It would take 30 years to fill the schools. They are in, far away from even the villages they are talking about. Meanwhile, you go to those villages, the schools there, the kids are on the trees. Is that the best decision? Is that what we want to do? The same Ghanaian will complain that, oh, complete, continue what has been left. You, the same Ghanaian, when we complete this hospital, you are talking about. Kufo started most of them. I can bring you figures in terms of monies they raised or whatever they signed. They left some of them eight years. And the Kufuado's government came, tried to complete some and even also start some. We don't do this propaganda thing that they want to always make sure that people go to what we are discussing today is that in terms of even the usage of our taxes ndc the social democrat any developing economy you cannot take away pro-poor policy 
We are capitalistic. We adopt expansion fiscal policy. They are supposed to do pro-poor policies. Tell me any of the pro-poor policies in Ghana, social intervention policy in Ghana, of national character and tenacity and international reputation that they could even implement. Because those things, you need prudent management of your economy internally to, to execute them. <coughs> it's not like I want to do project, NDC and we want to do this project, they get funds, they get loans. I'm not talking about that. But why we need this tax is that today people should listen if I'm lying. We have gone through impaired productivity, which is not our fault, unless you want to do politics with it. Because before a happy we're growing averagely 6.97% a year. Tell this thing happen. I thought it was 5%. No, 6.9. Go and check. If it was 5%, it's better than we inherited. We inherited 3.2 or 3.4. If, if it is 5%. We're having interest, uh, interest rate over 30%. Go and check all the banks. Some were getting to 37. Now, interest rate, you can get some 21, 22. Look at all the economy, even now. Then we started having debt to GDP going up because GDP was not growing. If you don't go to the shop, if shops had closed down, if restaurants had closed down, if they had reduced the numbers for months, your GDP will not grow. No professor can change this narrative. It's a fact. And you are also supposed to spend. You couldn't stick to the other option of financing, which is, of course, revenue, because you have revenue shortfalls. 2020, we had it. And once you have revenue shortfalls, you will be forced to leverage that financing, which is borrowing, because you had obligations. But because GDP was not growing, the numerator will go up. And you can't get to GDP growing up. This one, you can, I'm not saying that you can't have other margins of issues to add to as causes. But this is the remarkable cause, and it is a fact. If we have financial manager in heavy, you will tell, att attest to this fact. Then the same op opposition and express said, no, we are borrowing. Uh, our, our debt uh, as a percentage of GDP is becoming alive, which is a fact. So as a country, we should be careful the way we are borrowing not to destroy this country. Then we say, okay, let's look at other areas. My brother said something, widening the tax net. They are saying that informal sector, they are not even being involved. Let's even assume that what we are doing now is not the best option. It is an attempt to listen to the very propositions other experts gave that, oh, widen the tax net. Okay, so, yeah, that's what I'm saying. so let me no, ask let me. you, it seems that with the proposal of having e-levy as part of tax policy, what it seems is that the more you use an instant money, a mobile money payment platform or any financial transaction platform that is instant, the, the less your disposable income. <laughs> The last time I put it to you, the last, that, the last time I put it <laughs> to you, that I sent a thousand CDs <coughs> to Akosia. Mm -hmm. Akosia is going to use 500 to pay fees. Mm -hmm. Akosia is going to send another 300 to her mother. <laughs> Yes. Uh, uh, Akosia is this going is, to send 200. Have, this, this, see, this, this I know you disagreed with me, but no, no, the no. truth of the matter no, is that is, is what it is. Let me ask you. Let's all be honest with ourselves. Yes, that's what it is. How many people who need money for school fees, for feeding, how many of them? Do you want to tell me that if you send money to 100, there are issues that are always outliers in any situation. But you cannot say that it is a general practice that if I send money to somebody who needs food, hospital bills, school fees, the person will do onward lending and that will be taxed. Not onward this, lending, no, no, but no, no, maybe no. they are, are pay, no, but maybe they are can, paying can their I, school fees by mobile money. Are, that these same are money our is that, scenarios. No, that same money is taxed. Uh -huh. How many people have conducted research on what you are saying that if I send money, can, can I finish please? No, go ahead. Can I, you don't debate me. Oh no, go ahead. I listen to you, then allow me to respond. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. What I'm saying is that this, uh, this scenario is propaganda. It's propaganda. How many people in Ghana here that they are in need of money? You send money to them. They also send to other people. They send to other people. These are all issues that somebody just wants to find a way of rubbishing this policy. And all tax uh, uh, policies put some sort of reduction tendencies on our disposable income. That's a fact. All taxes. We do that because you take the money, do proper policies with it, and make sure that you maximize utility and satisfaction for the entire community. Nobody pays tax. It's not everybody that pays tax. That's the essence of government. That you take taxes, you put policies in place so that even a poor child from somebody for a very poor home can have access to education, 
can have access to some sort of good health, can also use the same road with the rich people. This is the essence of taxes. But what we are saying is that for today, our fiscal space is congested. Government was paying thousands of workers in this country and still paying some of them that they were not working. This is a fact. This is a fact. So what do we do today? Our brothers are saying that, oh, if we pass it, we will be unpopular and that what will happen is that we will lose 2024. So you think now NDC brothers, they want MPP to continue. Why are they? Because they know that if we're able to generate this amount that we are talking about, they know MPP government will do a lot of good works for this country. And people will vote for us. If they, are, they think what I'm saying is not true, they should allow us to pass the bill. And then we lose power. Because by 2024, Ghanaians will know whether we use it well or it was meant for their own good. The only face I agree with you and my brother is how we use our monies. Okay, we'll come back you to how we'll come back can to I, how we I? use. No, I want. I don't want you to go ahead. I, 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 <laughs> so I want to put it to you, um, uh, um, Doctor Amwa. Okay, I'll use a different scenario. You are saying that people don't own land and all that. So I have a thousand CDs. I pay my nanny <coughs> with that money. I send the money to her, and then once it's above the hundred CDs threshold is taxed then i pay my home teachers once i pay the home teachers maybe there are three of them you pay them with what through mobile money why do you, why if your home teacher come in uh, come and come to your house to teach them we've all had home teachers why do you say that because now we are taxing uh, mobile money somebody will go and send money to the home teacher no, and i'm sending it's, my, from, my, it's no, me no my, it's me alone it's not only you we no have, i'm saying that i'm using my account saying, what you're saying is not a general trend no because, i'm let me asking tell you, let me tell you nobody on this earth that teacher that comes to my house to come and teach my kids even without this tax if i'm going to pay money and it's momo definitely they will deduct one city and the person will say that me there respectfully this is add, what I want to do. I won't pay my teacher at home so that I will save one CD per whatever, 10 CDs or 100. I'll go and so that they deduct my money. Who no, will do this? No, so I'm you saying... No, so what you're saying. No, so what it. I'm trying to say is that... <laughs> so I'm making... I'm a busy woman. I'm making all these and your, payments. And doesn't come home? Your he comes to the house. He you can't put the money envelope that when teacher oh, comes Oh, so home. I, should, I should go to cash Please. economy. I'm not going to... No, what's wrong with going to cash economy? You're going to what? What is... What, what's wrong? Why are we finding in scenarios to wrap this stuff? that's what some of us Let do. Let me ask you, nobody who respectfully wants to make objective decisions, not out of arbitrariness. I want to just frame stories. We say that maybe I'm to pay my teacher thousand cities. The teacher comes home every day to come and teach my kids. I prefer paying where they would... I will pay more than the thousand. What kind of decision is that? Everybody spends to save money so that if my teacher comes, we all, me, Akiola, they were teaching me, if you heard that name, they were teaching me at home, even me as a literate child. I had a lot of teachers in Ghana here, they were coming home to teach me. So when they come home and teach me, my parents were so busy, they can't leave their money for them at home. They should go so that I take to where I'll spend more. Who will do this? Okay, I'm glad you've said this. Who because, will do this? Because I'm you asking see, you do no, that. but let me, but ah. because in an era of COVID, <laughs> we don't want to be interacting. We don't ah. want to be you. So, you, pay, so COVID, if you know, so if you know that you no, are spending, no, I'm just giving up. No, home. in an, so if you know that you are spending 5,000 a month, <laughs> you, you put, the, points aside no, I'm just, no, Mr. Dr. Abwa, I put 5,000 on my, wallet uh -huh. and i'm using it to make all these payments i go to a restaurant i pay uh -huh. i go to buy fuel i pay i'm uh -huh. the only one this one i'm not sending to any person to send to anyone uh -huh. by the time i spend that uh -huh. five thousand cds uh -huh. and 1.5 1.75 plus one uh percent -huh. is added uh -huh. how much would i have paid over that five thousand you know that is saying? what people you know, are you know complaining they're about they're even talking about that and other things talking about withholding tax and other things you do separate uh, exercises and you pay tax on them. Then everybody should pay just one tax component in this world. Just one. Just one. Because companies pay withholding tax, they pay payee, they do all those, they pay also corporate tax. So what are we talking about? So we you can so, this so, all over so, the world. So government Look, can also get its Jifa, fair share Jifa, from these financial Jifa, transactions Jifa, from the institutions Jifa, that are came, charging these Jifa, service fees. What this, about that? Let me make this clear to you. Ghana here, we are already running negative effective tax rate. Whether COVID or no COVID, whether in this UMPP. 
One, two. Even when this COVID came, private sector, over 40,000 people were made redundant. So pay ye, pay one. Government lost them. Companies' corporate taxes have been reduced so drastically because they were not working. We are running our revenue generation as a percentage of our GDP. It's somewhere around 11, 12. Against even the poor countries whose benchmarks are around 18 and 20. Check. Against the developed economies, over 30%. This country is kaput, not the COVID or whatever. If we don't do proper things in our country, the country will continue to suffer and destroy. We won't go there. Okay. If we are doing the right thing and people think they will do politics and other things and misdirect what the government wants to do, fine. They should wait 2024. But what I'm trying to say is that the NDC guys, what they are doing, they know this thing is good. But they are doing politics. And people would have done the same. Let's be honest. I don't want to say that we are angels. If but, somebody wants to come to power, but at the end of the day... But I doubt that, Dr. Amwa, because the NDC uh, has supported you previously on other issues. Supported which issues? Uh, they've supported the government. They've passed on appropriation and all that. Uh, so if it were really about politics, uh, they won't support you. So anyway, this is not politics. Le anyway, let me... Ask, no, no, can I also ask one question? So you've not heard that the NDC is one of your key positions is that when you vote this, when we pass this bill or tax levy, we are going to be unpopular in Louis 2024. You've never heard that. Let's be honest with yourself. You don't hear this. Yes. So NDC, yes. So NDC, the one has to win 2024. Okay. I'll, 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 I'll let, I'll let Ricket Hagan, Kate. Honorable Ricket Hagan come in now. But we let me Kate. read lots of your messages which have come <laughs> through. This one from Farouk in Tamale says, Good morning. We don't want the E-Levy today or tomorrow. The finance minister needs to give us a break. <laughs> Shadrach says, Why is the E-Levy so much of a concern to the government? As if that's the only means of generating income. The voice of Ghanaians, whom they represent in parliament, is loud enough to convey yeah. our displeasure <laughs> about this e levy. The Fight the economic in inequality <laughs> in Ghana, and there will be enough money for Ghana without e levy. Musa Abatua writes to us from Kumasi. He says, Jifa, I know that Dr. Amwa, um, I know Dr. Amwa for many years, and he is one of the persons who has decried. Okay, I think this message is not very clear. But what I think he's just trying to say is Ghanaians were suffering this today. And so justifying why government should continue to suffer, whether we like it or not, they will pass the E-Levy. Indeed, uh, power can change people. I, yes, you. you want just to change? One. No, no, for this issue, mm -hmm. just I beg you, boss. You know why he's saying that? Okay. There is this video going around. They just cut here, cut there, join and they are circulating all over Ghana. I am telling you, it's fake. They did that because they think there is no God. Why do you pick? No, no, I'm being very serious. Why do you pick? Did, you not, did you not say that you are in government, you will pass the E-Levy? TV three people came and interviewed me. I also interviewed you on radio. No, no, I'm coming. What happened? Yes. You no, said, what happened? Yes, yeah, so I said asked, I will pay, but Ghanaians can't do anything. No, you said that we are in government, mm -hmm. you we will pass this, mm -hmm. the NDC can't do anything Why? about NDC it guys? because you are in government, uh -huh. they should allow you to pass it. If it will make you lose elections, uh -huh. then they should and allow it to what, go what has through. What the NDC been saying? The NDC, they've been, I'm not saying all of them, but they've been threatening us. Read the NPP. Can, I, can you also no, I'm just explain? asking. Why are you taking one position? Oh, Jifa? no, no, sir. I'm not no, taking No, you anything. are. Oh. TV3 came and interviewed me in my office. You can call George. Then he asked me that the minority people are saying that there's no way they will allow you to pass this bill. They will not. Even my own uh, brother, Honorable Muntaka, on Joy, sorry, go and ask. Even to the extent that he was insinuating that the exchange of blows will occur again. If we do, go and listen. That I said that we will pass the bill. They can't do anything to us. And they are claiming if we pass the bill, we'll be unpopular and lose. So they should allow us to pass. This thing, what crime have I committed? No, you've not committed so any crime. So why is it that the entire country, they went and brought a time that people were chastising and now doing an MPP government. And I was interviewed by Adum TV. And I said that all the good works that we've done, we should appreciate and stop using propaganda. It won't act well for this country. And the way Ghana is going now, the COVID had not started. Okay, I, I think, I think you made that point. Then they went and cut, cut places, changed the story. Nana, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they brought this and they are circulating it. Okay. You see? So some people have doctored no, the video. No, you see, one thing about the media, when George came and uh, uh, he should have included the question he asked me, the leading question he asked me. Because if the NDC guys are 
putting up a posture like they will threaten us with words and stuff like that. They will say that what well, cannot be controlled by cowardice. Okay. We will pass it. Okay. And what I think crime? you've made I think you've made that point. But it's not a crime. Canada. But we okay, let stop me that. let me finish the text message. We should stop this. Uh, because people have also country. paid for that. This one from Stephen, your namesake at Kwabenya, says the finance minister and uh, the communications minister should spare us. If 241 billion uh, borrowed in five years could not construct roads. Is it the e levy that is going to do that? What happened to the Sino Hydro deal? Now you want to come and take our savings under this e levy. Under what tax law does the e levy fall? Why are they not passing the bill as Dr. Amwa says it will be done? Uh, Osman from Tamale says, why should I pay charges on salary that has already been taxed? Because I decide to send that money to my mobile money account or do a bank transfer. The minority must do everything possible to reject this killer tax. Sule from Tamale writes, Dr. Amwa should tell us which category of workers are not currently working and are being paid. The toll booth collectors are sitting at home and are taking salary because of government's intransigence. And the same with UTAG and other groups. So if the economy is not doing well, it's because of their bad approach, which is why. Lukman from Offenso, our leaders have no political will to address corruption-related issues, and that's why we are losing money. They only do so when it's against their opponents. And Wolanyo in Akwitia says, the minority is fighting a concern that is needless and quietly rhetorical. If it's true that the E-Levy will make this government unpopular and cause their defeat in 2024, then the NDC should help them lose by passing the E levy. And at this point, I'll come to uh, Honorable Ricketts Hager. Yeah, so we... the communications minister made a very instructive point, which we played earlier. She indicated that when um, the communication service tax was being put forward, the NDC was opposed to it. However, when the NDC came into government, it did not repeal that tax. And in addition to other taxes that we've seen, Tall debt recovery levy has been going on for God knows how long. The NEC never came and stopped it. And other taxes. So there is no guarantee really that all this opposition you are putting forward, that if this is passed, the NDC will keep faith with us and in principle, if it comes to office, say that, look, we were against this, it's regressive, and so we are removing it. Why should we believe you on the stance that you take? Well, thank, thank you again. I, I have been uh, listening patiently to my brother, uh, Doc. And uh, I, I know the passion with, with which he speaks. But I think, Doc, this morning, you have been passionately wrong on a lot of issues. Definitely, you not agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the idea that uh, we should sit down and let them pass it to go and lose. I think it, it, it will be very irresponsible, you know, to do that in, in opposition. We are supposed to be a constructive opposition and a credible one. Yes, we want to win elections. We want to win 2020. <coughs> but to say that we will sit down knowing that this tax is going to cause further hardships to Ghanaians, but it will actually help us to win an election. Therefore, we should let it go would be very, very irresponsible. And it, it wouldn't be something that I will, I will participate in. But um, just back on the, um, his schools, if they have built some classrooms, <laughs> that's OK. We're talking about schools. But if you've added some classrooms, fine. The question here is, it's not about number of classrooms that they have, they have, they have built or number of hospitals, if they've done any. It's about how much money has come into the hands of this government in the last five years and what they have used that money for. Here, yeah, one of your... Um, one of the text messages. Yeah, was saying... 241 about, billion. Yes, and that's exactly, you know, we hand them over 120 or 122 billion, depending on how you look at it. Now we are 341.8 billion. That is over 200 billion borrowed in the last five years. The question then becomes... What has this money really been used for? 
Every year is a year of roads. Yet, you see very little roads. Agenda 111, as you said, became a knee-jerk reaction and they had to, you know, start doing something. Now they've come up with a new models of schools that they are going to build, like they're going to do their own. This government has borrowed so much money. They have created so much deficit and as a result of that, borrowed at the back of deficit. But, but have, are you not, let me, you're not being, let me, you're not being fair to the let, government. Let me because, also, because to be honest, the last two years have been very difficult. Yes, I, I will come. Look, if I pandemic affected every corner of this planet not only in ghana those who had prepared well those who had a prudent economic management came out of this better than others and ghana was definitely not one of them we before the pandemic and this is a very serious something and and, and we'll take it up before the pandemic we were over and over saying that the government was doing financial engineering to the, to, the, to the economy, to the economic indicators, and that the figures being presented to us were not actually the true figure or the true state of the economy. You remember at one time there was even a, a dispute between them and the IMF as to whether the figures they've sent to them, and then later they said, oh, we didn't add financial, uh, what is it called, services, uh, cleanup. I don't want to call it a cleanup. That was a mess. You know, financial services. The banking sector. Yeah, the banking up. sector. The amount we of money that we was We didn't committed add to the it. energy. We didn't do this. We didn't do that. <laughs> we told them the deficit figure you guys are showing is a wrong deficit figure. It is good you want to be within the finance, uh, Fiscal Responsibility Act of the 5%, but it doesn't mean that you have to cook the figure. We told them at the time that your deficit was around 7%. They were telling us what their GDP was. We said, your GDP was around 5%, less than 5%. They said, no, we are growing at 6%. Less than 5%. Less than 5%. Well, I'm saying that your figures you presented. <laughs> can I, can I, Doc? Sorry, I gave you sorry, sir. time to talk. Sorry. Sorry. All right. The figures you guys were presented would be problematic. Now, what broke the camera's back was the pandemic, which obviously mess things up let me give you a, 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 an example you know and then my hometown in cape coast we have a pro there's not a proverb as they say if you build your house with clay and the storm comes and basically you know knock your house down when you get out of the clay house you are going to blame the storm but when you look around and your neighbor's buildings are still standing then you begin to you know, <coughs> blame the materials that you use in building your house. Ghana's economy before the pandemic was built with clay. That is why we are in this mess. We were cooking figures. We were not presenting the right figures. Therefore, when the pandemic came, we moved from 6% growth to nearly zero. When countries who were doing about 3% were able to maintain 1%. So there were serious fundamental flaws. We were piling up deficit. And you know, what is your debt, basically? Your debt is an accumulation of deficit. Your difference between your revenue and your expenditure becomes your deficit, which you have to fund. And you have to go and borrow and fund it. Okay, so we have, I so, think we have a 7% yeah. uh, of GDP, which is our deficit. Yeah, that absolutely. We have to close that yeah, gap. Yeah, we have to close that gap. Now, the problem is that we have borrowed so much. And you know, let me tell you why the people wonder why these guys are so much on the E levy. Let me tell you the secret what is happening. This government is in a mess. And I pray and hope that we can get a government out of this mess, but not by E levy, which is like 6.9 billion. Number one, we have borrowed so much. And you know, most of our borrowing in the last even decade has mostly been in the bond market. Especially them, in the last five years, they have borrowed, done more euro bond than government of Kufuo, Atamus, Mahama, all combined. We have borrowed to the hilt. At the moment, the problem we are having is that we are being downgraded because of the poor state of our economy. 
at the moment we've been downgraded by Fitch to B minus. There is a downgrading that will be coming very soon by Standard and Poor and Moody. What that means is that this government has lost the ability to go to the capital market to borrow. And therefore, the yield levies that they want to collateralize or leverage their future borrowings on, if they don't get a yield levy, our bonds in the market already will be like more or less a junk status. Because from B minus, you go to triple C. And it means that basically your bonds are nothing to write home about. Now, just to um, hold you there a bit yeah. on the e levy, if we have, according to government's data, yeah. some $90 billion running through financial transactions, mm -hmm. it may not seem unfair for government to want some of that amount because a lot of the transactions has shifted from the physical to the virtual. Yeah. I mean, people cannot be running e-commerce businesses and not contributing their quota. I, for I think I made a point earlier that the structure of the economy itself has shifted from you, what you have rightly said, traditional econo economy to the digital one. So shouldn't government take advantage of that? Because well, that's where the money is. The government can eventually, will have to go there, but it has to be done with a proper research, proper understanding of exactly what is going on. They have not understood anything about what is happening in the digital economy. Are you saying that the than, government has not provided or undertaken this research? Because when they had their uh, forum on Thursday, they provided data. Well, it showed the why, the how. It the, the fact that we disagree with it, it doesn't no, it, mean it, that it, it, it doesn't. It, it's, but it's I'll tell not you what valid. I will. I'll tell you what I will want to see and what I didn't see that I said it doesn't. Mm. It's not a matter of just telling us that. The, 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 the Ghana's economy has shifted to digital, therefore you have to follow them there and go and tax them. What exactly are we taxing? When we talk about a digital economy, it's not just, you know, a momo, you know, transactions. The e-commerce itself, I mean, I know they show some slide about e-commerce having, you know, reached about $780 million or something and the $90 billion that you are talking about. No proper work has been done in basically arriving at this 1.75 that they want to charge on Momo transaction. Other than that, if the government needs money, without the money, this government is going, and they need money. And then when you, when you tell them, they say, oh, doesn't every government need money? Doesn't every government? When you, are, when you need money for reckless expenditures, that is what the smart you know, aren't, you, aren't you being, um, what's the word, subjective by well, saying I'm, that the expenditure they are engaged in is reckless? If they have yeah. to build roads, if they have to provide well, schools, they have to build hospitals. I would want to see that, not, not, not a 50 million jet to fly but around just, and have but a But that's just one, well, that is a that's one, just one that, thing. That is one because it's happened at the presidency. That's probably why you've seen it. There are so many things. Look. That's just, the, I mean, the, I don't want us me, to use let, the presidential jet okay, as, because the that. truth of the matter is if an NDC president comes to office, I would want that president to travel in there a is, manner that you, maintains safety If you go through the budget, and I don't and know if that. Doc has seen it, I have read the budget from beginning to end. If you go through the budget, you will see some monies that have, they have allocated to certain things. That doesn't really make sense. Look, we have spent over 20 billion in this financial cleanup that they're talking about. They set up a company called GATS, Ghana Amalgamated Trust. Mm -hmm. That consultancy firm, it was called at the time, was supposed to be packed with expert bankers who will help the existing banks to survive. Now the Ghana Amalgamated Fund or Trust, without coming to parliament, is now being turned into a private equity and government is allocating one billion into that. That one billion will be coming from the e-levy. That money is going to end up in the pockets of people. It will not be doing anything. Somebody should explain to me why we have finished the financial cleanup, they claim. We are being levied for that whole cleanup, which was a useless exercise as a banker from a banking perspective. Banks that could have been saved. Look, 
bank, banks needed like 400 million, you know, 400 million. That was the new numbers that the Bank of Ghana wanted every bank to, to have. That was probably around three or so billion dollars or whatever, if you put it all together. They spent about four or five times that amount of money to collapse all these banks, to collapse you know, You're saying basically, it like the banks were collapsed for, for, for collapsing. Jifa, do you if, know... If of, banks are not... And you say you're a banker. Yeah. If banks are not <laughs> operating proper good governance structures, well, they are not well, providing the required liquidity, that, that mean, that the mean regulator... Does that mean they should be shut down? Does <laughs> that mean they should be shut down? Do you know of any single bank that had a bank run, and a bank run meaning that people were rushing to go for their money? Any single bank... All the banks collapse. If a bank is coming to collapse, there's going to be a bank run. Do you know of any of these banks that had a bank run on them? That people went there, that they but were going the to bank get of money? Ghana had identified the fact that they didn't get to that point doesn't mean that yes, we should what, allow. What I'm telling I mean, if they keep look, borrowing money look, to NIB, show up their liquidity, NIB, it's not sustainable. NIB was in worse states than some of the banks they collapsed. Why did NIB survive? Because they pumped money in it, because it was a government bank. They pumped money in it, and then they try to improve the management. What we needed was a better banking supervision by the Bank of Ghana itself. How could somebody get a banking license with forgery document? That is not, the, the onus is not on the person who is setting up the bank. I mean, we know there are criminals in this world, and that is why we have, we have you know, uh, basically structures to deal with them. If I come and set up a bank and I'm able to go out, get away with it by presenting you with false documents, some of these are assets. And nobody was able to do any proper due diligence. And then you said at the end of the day, you are closing that bank because they didn't present you with the right papers. You should have sacked yourself first before collapsing that bank. Okay, we've, so we've with, moved with, into with, other with, areas. With I, this kind, I'll, I'll let you respond. I, I, we need to I'm, take I'm, a break. I'm, 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 Telling you about with this these kind of reasons, this waste. These are the of, profligate expenditures. These you are, are referring the things to. that created deficit that resulted in borrowing and resulted in more taxes. Why are we paying financial services, you know, levy? It's because of this. Why are we going for e levy? It's because of some of these things. Why is it that we have flagship programs that are not working, but nobody is looking at it? The Ghana is the only country where the more money they put, you know, into um, food for planting and jobs, uh, food planting for, for food and planting jobs. for food and jobs. When you look through the budget, since MPP came to office, the contribution of GDP from agriculture has been going down. You can check in the budget. Forget about agriculture and say agriculture has fisheries and other things in it. Just take crops because they are planting for food. So what do you plant? You plant crops. The percentage of crops contribution to GDP has been going down. Um, most of the inflation we are having at the moment is food inflation as a result of not having enough food. Ghana is the only country where the more we plant, the less we harvest. Such a program should be looked at. The amount of money that we are borrowing to put into this program in buying fertilizers and all those things, somebody should look at where these things are going. If it's not working, we should revise it. Okay. Let's or stop it okay. so that we don't continue to spend money and think we need money so let's go and tax people we need money let's go and tax people it's about time you look at the expenditure i'm glad to hear and if we get the opportunity we'll come to that i'm glad to hear that the finance minister said he's suspending 20 percent of expenditure yes you yes. know across board a good idea but a bad strategy Okay, so we'll come back to that. Uh, let me take uh, some of your messages quickly and then Dr. Amwa will come in with his uh, responses. It's been quite a robust uh, back-end uh, discussion so far. Uh, this one from Frank in Takradi says, Jifa, I have two children in university who receive Momo every month. Are these, these kids are not earning salary, and so it means that they will also be taxed on the monthly remittance they receive. Is that what the government wants? Ismaila from uh, Horoya says, the MPP promised to strengthen Ghana and move it from taxation to production. 
please ask uh, Honorable Dr. Amwa what has changed. Um, he says we were supposed to move from ta uh, production, taxation to production. What has changed? Uh, Ernest, Ernest Kwashi says the controversial e levy. Um, is insidious and is aimed at ensnaring the already suffering Ghanaian masses who are already in despair. We, the overwhelming majority of Ghanaians, will mount a strong opposition to this uh, insensitive uh, levy. If the claim is there's no money in the public purse then and that they need money to govern this country, then they need to go back to the IMF for policy credibility, which is essential components for transparency and accountability. Um, this one from Koshi Badon, he says, if you transfer a million CDs between banks, you will <laughs> end up paying some 17,500 CDs in levy. Who would then do that? The cash economy would be unleashed once again, and this would have implications for money supply as large amounts <laughs> of money in the banking sector uh, will not be a large amounts of cash will all be available in the banking sector. I beg your pardon. It has implications for national security as large amounts of money will be moving about. We'll have lots of queues at the banks. Productive man hours would be wasted. Um, good morning, TV3. Um, the president told us that there is money in the country. If we have the money, why are we now uh, taking money from the ordinary Ghanaian. Um, Adam Swale from Tamale writes, uh, a government that came and freezed maybe jobs, I think you meant, for years because of economic mismanagement and IMF policy is now blaming the NPP government who had employed unemployed graduates of over 20,000 from 2018 to 2021. Evidence is that the local government sector uh, employed some 3,000 people, the audit service, 2,000, the security sector, over 10,000, and the audit service and the GRA as well. The NDC should stop the media propaganda and allow the government to pass the e-levy so that they can continue to manage the government and the country prudently. Those were your messages. Yes, Dr. Amwa. Um, Jifa, I'm begging you and the Ghanaian media practitioners that I'm not saying you don't love Ghana. I know you guys are doing well. It's not easy. The way MPP and this, we do our things. But I think we should introduce new paradigm shifts. That specific issues that come out for public controversy and debate. You go deeper, get the facts from the right source, and come and expose, expose MPP and DC. Because a lot of people are being deceived. Look, we mismanage this country and the economy that my brother was seeing. And he's a finance man. We have key performance parameters from reliable or statutory bodies, such as statistical services, IMF, Bank of Ghana. I'm not saying they have 100% data points correct, but we can rely on them. What did we take over in these areas? Can my brother tell me that we did not take over an economy that was growing 3.2 or 3.4%? Can he tell me that interest rate was not over 30%? Can you tell me that treasury bills, which when they go up, it means a country's economy is doing bad, wasn't about 22.5 within the same period. Now you get some 12 and 14. Can you tell me that government-owned interest rate is never occurred in any country? It averagely is higher than today's market lending rate. It was 25.5. Today we get lending rate less than 24%. So why are you lying to the people? Even when you are talking about that increment in this country cumulatively then dc has or have the worst record in fact their own last economic thing that they did read by my own brother dr atu hagan i'm with him on the same finance committee my brother should pull that data and show it to you they did it is the upsa between 2008 and 2016 they increased our debt portfolio over thousand percent from nine point i think two or three to 120 0.3 billion in terms of debt increment is over thousand percent between 2012 and 2016 they increased our debt portfolio over 240 percent we're not having any covid that we're actually impairing our revenue generation arm what are they talking about 
And they say that we don't use the money's well. All money's use go, go through finance committee and other committees on which NDC and MPP guys are sitting on. With the exception of this year levy that I can say the finance committee, my brothers voted against at the committee level. I'm being very honest with you. All of them, in fact, from 2016 that we came, asked him if they are not part of it. You can't talk wishy-washy. The fact is that there are challenges, yes. You can't say there's no hardship. When there hasn't been any hardship in Ghana. But the fact is that MPP government, at all times, managing the economy, have done far better than NDC. In all the fields, they are factual. Please, the roads that he's talking about, can you give us about two weeks? Call me and him. Let's break the roads down by MPP and what they did. And send, we all find money and give to your own reporters to go to the sites and check. In fact, NDC time, the major road that I know, the major road that they know, between Fufoso and Sola, they commissioned the road 2016. Sometimes you drive on that road, 10 minutes, you meet any car. Go and check the roads now. It's like pancake. You see, they can't do propaganda. You're talking about banking industry. Banking industry under this government is making profit annually sometimes over 100%. Please go to the banks and check. How many of okay. them are local banks? Huh? How many of them so are local go and banks? Check the local banks, whether they are not making profit. How many well, local I'm banks do we have? We don't have local banks. What do we have local banks? You have collapsed there. Ghanaian, NIB is Ghanaian, not a local bank. Ghanaian I'm coming. Owned NIB is not a local bank. Private owned owned bank. Please, you said when you're talking. Oh, it's okay. He can, he can ask questions, small I'm questions. I'm asking you questions. No, but I mean, they are prudent. Oh, Please no. ask me. <laughs> <laughs> Let him just ask you. So, he ask me. I'm listening. About. No, he asked. Is NDB not a local bank? Those are government institutions ah, as so well. So they are foreign banks? No, they are not foreign. So what I'm saying, what you have to do, your team, is to go and check the, even the individual banks, whether they are doing well or not. And he said that people are not rushing to the banks. In this country, some, somebody wanted even 20,000. 20,000. You sit at the bank, they will close. It was on TV, even your own TV. So why is he saying all this, this incorrect, making this incorrect statement? It's that true bank, that it's oh. true that no, it's true okay. some of the banks were distressed uh, and, and the there were there were financial interest. challenges. But I think part of the argument he was seeking to make is um, if we spend twenty billion on uh, financial sector cleanup, we invest money in uh, government flagship projects, whether it's planting for food and jobs and all these things, and the results of it still mean that people need to be taxed. Then ah. that's the question that is <laughs> ba, ba, ba. being raised. I don't mind you repeating what he's saying, so I'm not saying this mm. to you. I don't mind anybody who is not an expert in this field asking this question. Maybe I agree with him because he wants to do politics. So because of this, we don't tax. Let me tell you how we tax. We tax. Because I told you, 2017, we you, reduced you, you mentioned about it. 17 tax components. I'm coming. They introduced 26 between 2014 and 2016. We do that because it has to be done with that cal is a calibrative or calibration model or policies. That when situations are getting bad within our fiscal space, are you government spending against our taxation policies? You either introduce new one or reduce this one to solve problems. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And the fact that we introduce policy A, B, C, D in our great sector doesn't mean that we should get to so much results that we don't have to even tax. If you look, go and read the uh, PFM Act. Public Financial Administrative Act. Act, is it 2016? Act 9, is it 981? Okay, Section 18 there Public about. Financial Management Act. PFM Act. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yes, Section 18 there. It states three conditions, emphatically without any controversy or ambiguity, that under such conditions, even our fiscal rules and our policies, which mainly involve taxing policies and spending policies of government, should upon consultation be suspended. One, natural disaster. Two, war, three, health epidemic or pandemic. So even the situation we are in today, the laws of the land governing how we should spend our money, how we should tax and those things, couldn't have even been taken through the normal or the conventional practice. They know, but because they want power, they want to deceive the entire Oh, but uh, Dr. Amway, isn't it true that government, government must manage its expenditure? Ah, government, but is government I mean, not managing its expenditure? Well, if um, public sector workers <laughs> feel that they are getting a low percentage Can increment... I ask you, is there any era or period or year in this country that public service workers 
think that they are getting what they are supposed to get. Oh, certainly not. But yeah, I don't. I think. Don't I think. Raise. No, but I think the last the last two years, the four percent, seven percent, it's a bit low. We've had ten percent increase. We've had twelve percent increase when we're having in the past. Wage. And that them around six, Kufu, Kufu, six, six never the increase by six spine, or eight. Implement. Inflation rate was fifteen point four. We are not talking about. Uh, so, we are not talking about <laughs> minimum wage. Talking about? We are talking about the pub, the base pay, but public what I'm sector is that, increase. What I'm saying is that so, so the concern some Ghanaians have is that my salary increase is so small. Against what? Inflation. Inflation. That's what I'm saying. That's, you know what I'm saying is check and then DC. Salary oh, increase. But why do we dog. have to go back? Because he is saying it. No. Ah, ma, no, madam, I don't you get can you. Do the job then I don't understand what you are saying. We, I'm debating in this man who is claiming that the increment against inflationary rate is no good. And the other time is worse. I shouldn't say it. We are looking at we, the we, current. I don't get it. A single spine. Shouldn't we? No, but uh, I'm saying that if the same people that are complaining, they had a worst case scenario. So I they shouldn't talk. talk. Exactly. Because ours is better. Development is, is a process. You talk about marginal increase against even the existing conditions. They even came and look, they even came and canceled teachers in this allowance hall as pro poor government. They canceled all of those things. They even collapsed NHIs back to cash and carry. Go and check that time when they were living. Are they the same today? Now, over 100,000 Ghanaians, but for free SHS, would have been home. 10 years would have been over 1 million. Have you considered the, the fraction of it that will go into? Uh, robbery, insecurity, teenager pregnancy, the deplorable state that they will leave this country in. My sister, I'm not saying MPP government is perfect, yeah. but let's be very honest with what is happening and manage these things very well because people are, I'm sure, look, do you know about 100,000 teachers have been employed? And I, and I have to go and check from education. In parliament that in which I'm there with, these statements are all there. Do you know that? Go and check. People still need jobs. Between 2012 and 2016, what did they do? Because of just uh, uh, policy credibility. Policy credibility. What I'm saying is that we have a problem to solve because of an uncontrollable factor. Ships bringing things to Ghana today. Things they were taking $4,000. Now they are taking $12,000 over dollars. About 400 or 300% increase. It will affect everything because look at this room. Everything we use, about 90% we imported. Can you blame a good father for that? When COVID has caused all these things. So I appreciate the fact that there are problems. But even in the problems, we have done far, far, far better than those who are creating this, I mean, higgly uh, piggly uh, mambo jambo and the abracadabra in the system. We have done far better than them. No. Those who are raising mad controversy. Those who think they should be given opportunity, they've ruled this country more than any other government. Anytime they are living, they grow our economy less than 4% without any problems such as we're having. Anytime they are living, go and check all the economy. They are you talking about economic yes. figures. Okay. No, uh, let me, anyway, let yes, me also speak. end so that he can come in. NDC style. Eh? This, no, I'm not talking about NDC fake economic uh, figures. Not really? this one. I'm coming. And Ghana had to pay uh, millions of dollars. I will look for the right story. He knows what I'm talking If he's a finance person, not under my, uh, not <laughs> yeah. former President Mahama, anyway. Ah. You understand? But in DC, you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> now he's so, talking but about. But that's so far back. Ah, my said, What did he say? So, you so, 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 what happened yesterday is not past. Oh, I'm not saying that, but ah. that's why I can't even if remember. The way you are doing, no, but I see can't... everything that you want to rather find a reason for. No, them. no, no, far no, back. please. But it's under DC. I'm just saying ah. that it's so but far now, back. I'm even struggling to remember. What we are seeing is that. Maybe because you are not a politician. He makes a statement about a particular issue. They have done worse. I need to let him know that they even did worse. And yes, ours is not. And so they don't ours, have a moral right you know, to apart criticize Apart from moral you. right, they don't have to receive it. Two, what did we inherit? Even the credit rating. We and inherited... But what did you inherit? We inherited negative well, hold on. Beat. Didn't you inherit... Negative But beat. even then, didn't you inherit funds from the Heritage what Fund? Is the Sinking Fund? Ah, the... Fund what do you call yeah, it? The Infrastructure Fund. fund. fund from where? Then oh, this left the money. All these money. No, no. Then this left the money. Yes. That's not true. Let me explain to you. Oh. If, oh, okay. So, and the, and the MPP, the Heritage Fund and other things, they did not also inherit money or something. Or they put the heritage fund all over the, the weekend. It, Every government no, no, has... The heritage fund was set by, was set by the NDC. But that's so all MPP government so you, you, There was you, no you, fund that you... We NDC, it over NDC, to you. NDC inherited. Stabilization fund no, was saying, handed is that what over to, to you. 
Every, even the funds that we have got to gotten, you, we use them better, far better than them. The Ghana infrastructure fund was handed over All to you. All the money is there. The sinking fund talk, was handed over to Madam, you. Madam, when you speaking, I'll do so. Okay. Don't stop it's me. No. To speak okay. I will do. Okay. I will do okay. so you, you you don't even worry. Okay. I will not listen to you, so don't worry. <laughs> I would do say <laughs> oh, that one is a fact. Oh, Doctor Amwa. Because Amwa. I kept no, quiet for him for too long. Okay, so you wrap and up, Doctor Amwa. Up. It's okay, so, so Doctor Amwa. You wrap up. Going. We have fifteen more you minutes, know, so Doctor Amwa, you, you wrap up. Time. You have taken more time. Okay, Doctor uh, uh, Honorable Hagan. So let him wrap up, and then you can come in. Yes, Doctor Amwa. You see, they, these uh, are the things they, that push me to say things people think I don't have the right to speak. The NDC, most of them are full of lies. Rana, he said, I have taken what time have you said for me and yourself? Okay, okay, let's you go. You can't be, no, 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 let's go, no, it's okay, let's not go no, into that. So, so, let's not go into that. Way let's I stick. respect him. Okay, so let's stick, let's stick, let's stick to the, the issue. And no okay, let's okay. The truth so let's stick, to, let's not go into that. I'm, I'm the moderator, I'm the moderator, Madam, so don't worry. Just explain, speaking? just explain the issue you wanted to explain. You see why he's done to my time, said No, he's not done anything to your time. You go ahead. People are watching, so don't let them think you are supporting him. It's okay, please just go ahead. Because you see what he's done. But I've allowed you to continue, please continue. How can I continue? If you distract me and put me off my okay. track, how, okay. do, how do I speak? Okay. The, and then you allow him to do it for a long time. No, no. He was just ad asking you uh, questions. The last one, he was asking me questions. The Heritage Fund. Hey, madam. People are watching us. No, but the no, Heritage... No, people are watching. He will not speak. Race. Don't even worry. He will not speak. I'm being honest with you. Oh, that's if you are not being fair enough what he's doing to me, I will let him... I will not let him speak. No, he was just raising you the see, issue of the Heritage I Fund and those funds. With my peace with God. Nobody can control me with this lies about stickers. I'm very calm no, 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 no. Just, It's me. okay. So, but I want my space to be respected. Okay, I want it's, fair grounds. It's fair grounds. He ground, spoke so, and I kept quiet. Okay, so, go, so make speak. your point. And see, I, what I've allowed you to make your point and for five fair. minutes. It should be fair. You but I said you should make your point. But now I will speak again. Let him speak. It's okay. Make your point. I don't please. have any point to make. Speak. You alone should speak. Well, if you don't have, if you don't have any point to make, let me make that. Uh, point. Because it's not right. You cannot do that. If you don't have any point to make, no, you cannot do that. Let me make the point. You cannot. Okay, it's the all right. Speak on this the it's you okay. Have said, you cannot speak on this Dr. Amwa, it's all right. It's okay. It cannot be all right. Dr. Amwa, I I'm ask you to make your point. Let's have a civil conversation here. Any government that comes and go, there's a fund policy that somebody inherits. You inherit debt, you, 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 you inherit liabilities and assets. How you use the money for? That's why I have reference point analysis. What you took over. In spite of all that you are talking about, we have been using state resources far, far, far better than the NDC. It is a fact. You cannot change it. It is not about propaganda. So if we want this country war and go with the Bible and the Quran, please, the so-called people who think they are speaking the truth and they know, they should go and pick this. They come and tell Ghanaians. We don't want the wishy washy. Why is that the NDC is not analyzing what the Kufuado government took over from them? one by one and say that we've done positive to negative to these are the figures why are they not doing that now they are talking about corruption corruption perception cannot be accepted we in have Ghana. not started that topic no but he said there. he said that the way we use the money we will come there so you we cannot because after each government who which is this is fraternity somebody is jailed for corruption kufua came they use wah wah boom boom you remember they came after that eight years who could they jail it is only when court of competent jurisdiction pronounces you guilty and you are jailed. Then you can say somebody is corrupt. It's not the perception. So what I'm saying is that MPP is not perfect. NDC, they are not perfect. I can't say NDC, they've not done anything good. But between the two, about 90% of all performance parameters or appraisal document uh, indicators, MPP is 100 times better than NDC, except those who are dishonest, intellectually dishonest, or they just display their ego trips, or display only unconscious incompetence because they don't know the facts. They depend on facts and lies and deceptions. I, I mean, within okay, the, I, space, the space where people put things on internet okay, and deceive people. Thank you. Thank you very this much. This is what I want to say. All right. Yes, Honourable Ricky Hagan. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Um, if I, first of all, I want uh, Doc to understand that uh, I'm not the type to be bullied, and he can't bully me. So he should not even attend that. Me. Let's have a civil way of having a conversation here. This is and very not and, and and not civility yeah, and, is and, when and I not, made you talk and not be pointed that you will let me talk. No, 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 no. Doctor, you have no right. No, no. 
What you can me respond, that you will not make it No, civility is when you have I can no right to speak. And it's to my tell me, you, let me talk. that I cannot you talk. But you have been allowed to make you your have no right. I said me. you have no right to tell me I cannot talk. No. You speak with English. You have no right. So don't say that. Tell you not to use those. I said I want the I want the two of you gentlemen. So honorable Hagar, just go ahead and address the specific. I need him to understand that he cannot tell me that I cannot talk. You are not the moderator. But don't and you can know, what is the insult? We say civility. When you were speaking, I kept quiet. It's what, why you didn't allow is me that, to what, what is the insult about civility? Ah, so check your what, what is the of Check the Oxford In the context right? you use. What is the meaning? What, 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 what which you context? Implying? I'm not being civil. If I'm not being civil, is that not insult? Yes, we are not we are being, being civil here. here. So you let's cannot point your hand at me oh. and tell me that okay, so I cannot Okay, so Dr. Amwa, I think you have no right. I think you've made your point. you can distort me, but don't tell It's okay. So please, Dr. M, Honorable Hagan, I want the two of you to give each other space. I We want the conversation We want the conversation to go on in a clear, calm manner. So I have made a point, Jifa. That he cannot I'm bully me. Okay. And he cannot I tell me. You. It's that okay. I cannot Nobody talk. is bullying anyone. You have, no you have right your point. To do that. You have your point. Go now, ahead, Honorable Hagan. Right. Yes. Now, again, <laughs> this government change. has mismanaged the economy to an extent that now they are boxed Please, into a corner. On, bring sir. your figures. They are boxed into a corner. I'll bring you the figures. Okay. Uh -huh. Stay them. You what we took over. Okay, hold on. No, no, not about, I, you are not going to tell me what I should say. I will tell you <laughs> what I what <laughs> what I have go. to tell you to back my okay. Oh no, please. Yes, sir. Yes, thank you. Okay. You have run a deficit that you have not been honest with before pandemic. You were cooking figures, <laughs> and we pointed that to you, you know several times. <laughs> you went to IMF with wrong figures, and then you came back telling us that you did not add financial services and other things that is why the figures like that even last last year when you told us that the deficit was uh, was 9.4 it turned out that it was 12 for the same reason that you have not added certain things to it you have but, run but is that a wrong oh thing i mean if uh, well, uh, if you're not being true to your people they may not it's not that they are not being Look, truthful. Maybe this is the way we they have, present we, their we, accounting. We have a standard of true. presenting it's not financial figures. We have a standard for presenting economic figures. You cannot choose. Look, you are entitled to your own opinion. You are not entitled to your own fact. And fact must be presented the way it should be presented. You cannot pull a wool over our eyes and be telling us things. And then when we got into this pandemic, now everything is pandemic. Meanwhile, you have received so much money from this pandemic, from the World Bank, from the IMF, from uh, what is it called, fund, from, from stabilizer. You even wanted to go to Heritage, and we didn't allow you. You set up a private, you know, donations. So you have spent so much money, money over we'll billions, <laughs> yet you did not even put up a single hospital to treat COVID. All the hospitals were there for you. The government that you ah. accused... <laughs> of misusing money was the same government that built the hospitals yeah, the that you are enjoying today. You've been talking about year of roads every year, and I'm not sure what that year, when that year will come. Agenda 111. We are still at the same place. Yet you have been giving so much money, revenue, taxes, borrowing. You've done all this. You have nothing to show for it. I said, and I challenge you again. You have flagship programs that are not working. Would you not take a look at those and say that, let's look at our expenditure. Let's put the whole expenditure on the table and look at the things that we are investing money in and look at whether these things that we are doing are performing. The fact that it's a good thing that you are doing does not necessarily mean that you are doing it well. And definitely planting for food and jobs I don't see. As an, you keep mentioning that, but yes, that's just because, one flagship And it's a program. very expensive one. But that is doing there well. is a lot of money doing well it's by, what, by what time. standard. It's better. Far by what standard? Agreed today is far better than your time. It is not creating the jobs that oh. are needed. Oh, the more you plant food, the less you harvest. Most of the inflation we, are, we have today 
are all food inflation. Okay, but what apart, does that from, mean? apart from planting for food and jobs, apart from, I know you've criticized uh, what we spend in terms of the presidential travels. Absolutely. What else and do you feel that we should cut? The, the corruption. The presidential travels. Which president the, never travels? The, the, the corruption. And which president never used And that is where they are using change. money. And that is why uh, we are incurring <laughs> all this deficit that is translating to borrowing. So your time now, no deficit. They are in a... No, well, well, Dr. Ama, you, can, you can, Oh, yes, you, you've you asked. Can, you so can, you can, asked. There was no deficit under the NDC. Well, the, you said you can fix the, you can fix uh, the problem. Uh, and then you are here, you are running at 12% deficit. You are having effective tax rate. And then you are putting rate, everything. Negative what, 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 what effective negative tax rate? Let me explain to you. Tax you don't understand, let me explain. I, I, I don't understand. So I explain it. I don't understand. So I explain I don't, I don't want Transfers to go into that intellectual so angle with you. So because you don't the know more than okay, I do. So you, I, agree. I have to happy, let you know that. Happy, okay, so Dr. Yeah, so no Amwa, uh, you've had your time of interruption. You have no yeah, negative. You have no negative. You, you have no negative. So, so, so you know. Look, you know, last year, last year, you heard that they said GRE said that they have achieved their tax target. Oh, come on. Okay, Come on. you have achieved your tax again. I wanted to say something about taxes, which is not actually this government alone. Mm -hmm. But over the years, as I started like in the last 10 years, yeah. you realize that our revenue is always lagging behind our output, which is our GDP. Mm -hmm. And that can be reinforced when you look at our revenue to GDP. You realize that it's below what our peers are getting. Mm -hmm. we are, it's only this budget that we have projected that we are going to make a hundred billion and that translates to about 20 percent yeah. of our gdp which is an but increase of over 40 billion over because 40 i think billion. last year yes. our target was 60 billion yes oh, uh, well it was, target was 72 oh. billion we got 70. Mm -hmm. but in terms of we have three different re three different we have the total revenue you have the domestic revenue and you have the tax revenue so when you add it up then you get to the total revenue mm -hmm. now if you look at the way we look at in terms of setting up our 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 tax you know targets we have not been doing very well at that and it's not peculiar to only this government Pe somebody will tell you that sometimes when we say if you look at the last 10 years you realize that that most of the targets we set we don't actually get it and the reason we don't get it it's not because we set ambi um, what is it called ambitious you know tax target but it's because we are not able to reach all the corners where we should get the tax. As I said, the But that's why sector. the government wants to do e-levy, and you are yeah, opposed yes, to it. Yes, and I'm coming down. So we realize that we need to look at how we can widen the tax net. We're looking at the informal sector and looking at the structure of the economy itself. The structure of the economy has shifted, as you rightly said. But in order to go into the the the, the e you know, transfers and that space, the e-commerce and all that. You need to understand exactly what is going on. You don't go there and just slap taxes on anything because you are looking for money. And then say that we need money, therefore we should give you the money. I, I told you something, that even with indirect tax, that affects everyone. It is still not good for others because there are people who are already paying their fair share of tax. But in trying to reach some who are not, you try to slap more taxes on them. Those things need to be looked at. Okay? So do you, do you project that we are going to go back then to a cash economy? Well, that is basically, we are, we are losing, if we go down that road, we are going to be losing all the gains that we have made. But what and, do you then and, say and, to the communications and, minister and, and, and who said that the CST, people complain that it will make people stop wanting to use their phones and all that. Well, Nothing has changed. We had VAT which we are all enjoying today, it came and we opposed it. What did the NDC do? No, no, no. The, 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 the MPP in opposition first opposed it. The yeah. NDC had to withdraw it exactly. and go back and, and look at it, it because and bring it I wasn't back. there at the time, but it looks as if probably much work was not done on it, so they had to go and do it. Yeah. When you ask these guys to go and do the same, they say no. Okay. Uh, we want to reduce we want it. To, okay, so, we so want you said you've reduced it. Yes. Uh, is so, my time up? Oh, he said yes. yes, your time is up. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we need to start you putting a, 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 oh, no, a block and, Hagen, don't and go look there. at the time. Honorable Hagan, don't go there. So, um, just a quick one before you Sorry. come to the attacks. Are you not worried 
that will go back to a cash economy. All the work the government has done, meaning if I know I'm spending 5000 a month, I'll go and withdraw it and I'll spend it small, small. I will not use Mumu. I'll disable it. It means that anyone who wants money, they'll have to come to my office and Can take I it. Can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. If I have 5000 in my account, I will not keep it with the bank because of this tax, because of Mumu. What has that got to do with this? I mean, practically. I mean, if I, I beg you, my boss, as he said, he knows more than I do. It's possible. I don't know the length of knowledge he has. <laughs> but if you be honest with Guardians, cash economy and this, these are all political propaganda jargons. We don't have to go there. The fact of the matter is that he levy they know will not be palatable in the short term. But in the medium and long term, it will solve not all, but most of our problems. We are in government. I'm saying that they should allow us to pass. If we are able to attain what Ghanaians want, they will vote us. 2024 is a one, two. They talk as if we don't care about Ghanaians and we are putting more taxes on them, as he said. I said between 2014 and 2016, they put taxes, they put or increase 26 tax components. That one we don't want to talk okay, about. You've it. made that point, but what about the no, text messages? I'm coming. The I'm text messages of all the ones I Nifa, read, only to support the levy. Nifa, how many people? Who, how many people have the opportunity to text? How many people want to text? You cannot use this. You cannot. It I'm not saying it's Nifa, total. I'm explaining technicalities. Mm. And this is talking about widening the tax net. Having they been government more than any other party, having they. I think he's admitted to that. Thank that you. All governments haven't done but very well. All there. the resources we've taken as a country, we have done far better than them. If you've Roads. if you've done far better, oh. why are we in in such debt? Why have you borrowed so much? Ah, if you've managed you managed the resources I told so you well, that for the past twenty two months, it's because of the COVID. Look, pay over forty thousand employees. Okay. Our government was not getting pay. Corporate bodies were not paying corporate tax. They were supposed to pay. Market had been shut down. Restaurant had been shut down. Will you get the needed revenue? No. But if you don't get the needed revenue, you'll be, if you have a, a husband and things happen, you can't go out. You can't even go to your farms or your shop. Your kids will eat. They will have, they have to be given medicines if the need arises. They need water. They need electricity. Probably you, 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 got, you had a high purchase car from a bank. You still have to pay. So the, the difference between your asset and liability as a, as a family there will be some sort of deficit. You will get surplus. These are practical facts and issues. So circumstances led to probably the unexpected debt to GDP, which is not the fault of this government. No, no honest professional person can attribute. There could be other issues you could raise, which, which are general, wastages in the system. It doesn't matter who is in government. We need to address. But we know profoundly, profoundly, remarkably, this whole health pandemic issue for almost two years. Even United Kingdom, look at their, their inflation rate now. Fourfold from 1% to about 4%, about 400%. I don't have a way of verifying that. Oh, you can Google. Check their, 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 their interest rate from 0 0.5 to about 0 0.15. These are giant economies. Do you want to tell me that when the private sector had to be closed, they had to uh, sack people from their places and other things, it did not affect government revenue? Let, let us do that. And okay. even with this, all the things we took over from them, I can tell you that about 90% of them, we are better than them, even with this situation. Okay, even so that... with this situation, please go and check all of them and bring to us that our flashy programs are not working. If, really? Okay, I, I don't do want, to, want, to, I don't want that, to start a whole look, new debate do you on, want to tell on that, planting for no, food do you and want jobs. To tell me that Free SHS is not working. No, free you SHS is good. You want to tell me that insurance is not better? Go and ask the service providers. I'm not saying it is perfect. But go and ask them, whether under them and under us, whose regime is making sure that they are more efficient and effective. Okay. Thank so, you very well, much, Dr. I'm Amor, surprised. for that. And uh, that's uh, going to bring uh, close to that segment on the e-levy controversy. And it's still controversial because uh, we have to wait and see what happens in Parliament.